G'day everyone and welcome to a new video series done by yours truly. My name is Bodhi Cutler and today we're going to be looking at new cards from Sun and Moon, their impact on the metagame and some combinations and some deck combinations as we're looking into the standard format and going towards the Melbourne International event in March. Today the first card we're going to be talking about in this new series is Lorantis GX as you can see on screen. So, Lorantis, as we don't have an English version of it yet, I will explain to you what the card does, and then we're going to go over a couple of different options. So, Lorantis is a Stage 1, 210 HP Grass Pokemon for a single Grass Energy, does 40 damage, and allows you to attach two basic energy from your discard to any one of your benched Pokemon. Now... Its second attack is Grass Grass Colors, as you can see, for 120, it heals 30 from Lorantis. Its GX attack, uh, one Grass Energy, it does 50 times the number of Grass Energy attached to this Pokemon. GX attacks, of course, you can only use one per game. What makes this card so powerful and so interesting is the first attack. Being able to attach basic energy of any variety, not just Grass, which is um, not something that we will cover in this video, but it is uh, definitely a possibility going forward. Uh, gives it an incredible range of versatility. The other thing that makes this card so appealing is 210 HP. Uh, having so much HP and being able to abuse cards like Max Potion, because you only really require one energy unless you plan to use the second attack, is very strong. The first card we are going to talk about today with Lorantis GX is Vileplume. Now, uh, Team Omnipoke, uh, Joe Bernard, I believe is his name, check them out on YouTube and Facebook, put up a list for Lorantis Vileplume not too long ago, uh, showing the ability to, I believe at 74%, be able to get Lorantis, a Vileplume, an energy on Lorantis and at least one energy in the discard on the first or second turn of the game. Now that is an impressive statistic and it is um, definitely a very well-defined list from Joe. I really appreciate how, um, how they've gone and showed you the math of their draws, especially over uh, such a number of draws like 50. What makes this deck work is of course Vileplume's ability to shut off your opponent playing trainers and being able to abuse cards like Forest of Giant Plants. Any of the three decks that we talk about today are going to be running three or four Forest of Giant Plants. Most of them will be running four. Uh, which is why the card I believe is so good in the first place and why it will continue to be good until Forest of Giant Plants rotates out of the format. Uh, Lorantis Vileplume is a lock deck. Uh, it stops your opponent playing items. You're able to heal yourself with Lorantis' second attack. And if you can stack up enough energy on a benched Lorantis, or even your active, you can do 200 or 250 damage to end off the game on a big Pokemon. I want to talk next about Lorantis and Lugia EX. Now, I spent a lot of time thinking about combinations for Lorantis that didn't center around Vileplume and a card that we'll talk about later, Trevenant EX. But Lugia EX, this Aero Ball, does 20 damage times number of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So for a double colorless energy, this card is doing 40 damage. If your opponent has a energy, it's doing 60. Fighting Fury Belt makes it 70, etc., etc. Now, being able to stack up many energy on a Lugia is where this idea came from. Being able to use double colorless and to also attach energy from your discard to Lugia to use attacks like Deep Hurricane for 160. Lorantis hitting for 40 damage is rounds out at an even 200, being able to kill pretty much everything unless an EX has a Fighting Fury Belt. There is a lot of potential with this combination. The other card that you can use is the Baby Lugia, which is three colorless for 60 damage and does 60 more if the opponent is an EX. I unfortunately 
do not have a finalized list, but this video is only meant to be a short example of some combinations that you can do with Lorantis. In the future, when the set inevitably drops, we will try and get some lists for you all. Now the third card that I wanted to talk about, it's a much shorter video than usual guys. I'm not necessarily used to keeping my points short, but the third card we are going to talk about is Trevenant EX. Trevenant EX, 180 HP basic grass EX. Uh, Dark Forest for 20 damage, you can see there. Uh, you can't retreat during the next turn. And Wood Blast, which is uh, basically Keldeo EX's secret sword attack. Now this is another uh, partner for Lorantis here that has stacking damage. And I think that stacking damage in this format and in general is very prevalent. Uh, especially with more HP coming from more Pokemon in the future. Uh, GXs, all of which have over 200 or over HP, making it very hard to one-shot anything. So cards like Trevenant for 3 Grass Energy can deal 110 damage, which is two-shotting most things. For another energy, it's doing 130 and so on and so forth. With a Fighting Fury belt, of course, that adds an extra 10 damage. Um, if we are talking now about three potential partners, we also have to talk about uh, a very significant deck in the format that counters this idea, and that is Volcanion EX. Volcanion EX has been a very popular deck since its release in Steam Siege and uh, potentially has the ability to become even more popular as the meta progresses forward and as Sun and Moon comes out. There's quite a few grass Pokemon in the set and quite a few usable grass Pokemon in the set, uh, Lorantis being one of them, Serena being one of them, and Decidueye being the third. They're all evolution Pokemon that can use Forest of Giant plants, just like Lorantis can and all are weak to fire, making Volcanion a very popular meta choice for big events. Now, decks that are planning to stop Volcanion may look towards Garbodor, Muck, Silent Lab as potential options. Do I see any of these decks running Muck? I don't think that I do. I don't think that any of these lists have the potential to abuse muck, abuse cards like Wally, uh, as lists for these decks will be incredibly consistently focused on getting Forest of Giant Plants and your Grass Pokemon out as often as possible. I can, however, see this combination here running Garbodor, even as a small line, to prevent most decks in the format from being able to abuse their very strong abilities in the early game and in the mid game and of course in the crucial later stages of the game when N becomes a massive factor. The other option of course is Silent Lab and if we go back to talking about Lugia EX now, it's important to Understand that Deep Hurricane, if you choose to use its second attack, Deep Hurricane, you discard a stadium card. And playing cards like Silent Lab and Forest of Giant Plants in this general sy uh, synergy is going to be good because your opponent cannot abuse Steam Up. But having to use Deep Hurricane will require you to discard that energy. I think the Baby Lugia as well as the potentially new Tauros GX. Uh, maybe we'll see play with this sort of idea, but we'll have to see going forward. Uh, I want to keep this video relatively short, guys. I just wanted to kind of give you three ideas, one of which is already very popular out there at the moment, Lorantis Vile Plume, and two uh, lesser talked about ideas for the time being about Lorantis GX and what that means going forward. Um, what do you guys think? I really would like to know. Um, 
this will be on post on Ace Trainer, of course, when this video goes live. So make sure to let us know what you think Lorantis, uh is strengths are, what's its weakness. Obviously, we mentioned Volcanion. Is there something that I am not thinking of that makes the card weaker than usual? Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching uh, this first video on the Sun and Moon set, guys, and we will see you soon. Bye.